Good morning, everybody. As you can see, we're in the bus again. Aaron Feenstra here, Countryside Acres, and a whole bunch of lovely kids. Some are sleeping, some are awake. No, I think they're all awake. We are out again, uh, leaving the city, heading out to the country. Gonna look at another farm uh, opportunity. This is a guy we've been dealing with for about a year, roughly. Uh, not directly with him so much, but he's got some proposals, some ideas uh, that he would be interested in sharing with us and we may be able to partner with. So we would like to take a serious look at that today. See, um, yeah, I don't know, I think we're going to look at some land, definitely uh, look at his barn and stuff, his cows, and uh, look at all that. He milks 850 cows and there's an opportunity to uh, feed calves here, baby calves, something we have experience with. Um, yeah, and, and we'll see what other opportunities are around. So come along for the journey. beautiful drive so far I think we're a little over an hour into the drive uh, one thing we were really worried about moving to this area actually is flat flat land because there's just no character to the land if that makes any sense that it would be all just flat plains and uh, that hasn't been the case actually looking out the window can't see much out there uh, but it's actually rolling hills here too the land drops off down here but we can't see that too well uh, but yeah really liking the character up ahead here as well is doing more outside shots today, but you can see there's nice hills in. Now, as far as farming, we don't want huge hills. You don't want to roll a combine down the hill or nothing, but it is nice just to have some character uh, to the farm. If you live on a bald prairie with no trees in sight and everything's flat, that's kind of boring after a while as well. So this has a lot of character.
Alright, we've arrived. It is a very uh, foggy morning today. It is, it is. This is the farm of our host today. He milks 850 cows. I don't know if they're all farmed right here or not. Uh, just visually it looks like multiple different farms, or multiple different barns. And the rest we have to learn yet, I guess. There was a big pile of feed back here as well. I think that's behind the van, perhaps. Big pile of bales. I don't know if that's straw or hay. The smell is great in the air. We can smell dairy. The smell of money, eh? I don't know if it's profitable here or not, but it is back home. Dairy cows are a pretty good thing to get into. All right, the tour begins. Start in the barn here. We got older barns that they're fixing up, and then uh, newer barns. So the older ones sounds like they're tie stalls, where the cows are all tied up in the barn, and you go to the cow to milk it, which is uh, is nice. It's uh, more work on the human, I guess, and pretty comfortable for the cow. You'd think it's not ideal because they're tied up, but uh, dairy barns, modern dairy barns, are extremely comfortable for cows. The other version would be a freestyle where they're free to wander around wherever they like, uh, which is a lot easier on the human. Um, man, nothing wrong with it for the cow either. Mm, beautiful Yeah, this is old one which will be reconstructed this year. Right. Здесь будет беспривезное содержание, скрепер на удаление навоза. Yeah, right. All right, so in the tie stall, they stand here. They're tied up here. You keep them nicely bedded here, and then they poop in the gutter. Uh, yeah, see, there's a, what you can see in there, but that cleans. There's an auger system in here. But the ones we're familiar with would be more uh, like a chain of paddles, but it pulls all the manure down to the end of the barn. So, but it's very labor intensive, right? Somebody has to physically milk all of these. Uh, each person can only run so many milk units and keep an eye on them. Uh, auto takeoff makes that a little easier, but still it takes a lot of time. So a, uh, a freestyle system, you stand in a parlor and you could be milking, I don't know, let's say a double 12 parlor, you'd have 24 cows around you with auto takeoff. It's all in one area. Um, it's a lot less labor. And also improvements as far as health is what they're saying. Uh, less mastitis issues. Mastitis is in the mammary glands laying here. Uh, it's just less clean. So in the modern freestyle barn, they're going to update this whole building and it'll be a lot better. This is what they're eating. So they got water bowls. Water bowls and feed. It's a mixed ration. Very delicious. Smelling. So this is fermented. Uh, hay, take hay and you put it in a pile. You can do it either in a, in a pile, smush it down, put plastic over it to ferment it, or uh, what we did at home is bale it. Put it in bales and same thing, put it in plastic. But it's baled wet, not dry. Nice facility. So a big facility, but they're, yeah, they're gonna modernize it next year. We're gonna take a look at one of the uh, barns that they've already modernized to see what the difference is. And uh, there'll be a lot of changes coming. Here's some humans I know. 
I've got a labor shortage here, so they would have a lot more cows in here to milk if they had more labor. But it's always hard to find. Uh, we have the same problem everywhere. It's hard to find good help. And uh, a lot of Canadian farmers are going to robotics. More and more automation because it's hard to find good help. And people get sick, right? Every company is going to robotics because uh, people get sick. They need days off. They complain. Uh, and, and a machine doesn't do that. So the more streamlined they can make it, the easier they can run their business. And... Um, yeah, the more cows they can milk, the more more milk they can produce. Baby calf palace. So they got these guys in calf hutches, very similar to Canada. I've never seen as many calf hutches inside a barn, but it is nice. You don't have to fight with the snow in here. So these are all, there's a calf in there. Yeah. Uh, all right, so they're here from birth till about four months old. And then they move them into the next facility. Uh, about 250 of them here. <clears throat> they got some older ones here. These guys will be getting closer to the four months. They're in a group housing. And then they've got the younger ones in the hutches over there. In the summertime, they bring them outside. And uh, in the wintertime, they keep them in here. So it's actually quite ideal. It's just as cold in here, but they don't have the wind and the snow to contend with in here. So it's a little nicer. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Will ever figure out where the road goes even if I'm falling down, I will keep on searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind, I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down Jumping from cliffs so high Trusting our wings to fly Sometimes we're crashing down But we get up and start from the ground I will keep on searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down barn used to be a tie saw they've renovated this one already when did they do that 2016 14. 14 so here you can see they're loose they're free and they can go lay down wherever they want whenever they want they can come up and eat whenever they feel like it and it's a lot less work for the farmer the cow comes to you rather than uh, you to the cow same facility though they just took everything out and opened it up you can see it on this side as well and uh, there's no cows on this particular side, but they can come here whenever they feel like it. Water bowls right there. And then you just use a crit steer or something to clean it up. For older and for younger cows. Okay, that makes sense. This girl's wasting some feed. <laughs> so again, there's the ration. And they have a high, or a older cow, younger cow ration here as well.
So they're saying they have basically no disease in this barn. It's a whole lot better than in the tie stall system. And of course, a lot less labor. And uh, seeing as they have a hard time finding labor, this is uh, pretty ideal. So there's a few things in here that obviously, uh, like in our barns, we would have a scraper system. So there wouldn't be this much manure. Things like that, I think, could still be improved on and even make the cow comfort that much better yet. Uh, that must be the milking parlor on that side, I'm guessing. Hey, girl. Uh. All right, milking facility. So you can see here where the cows come to the farmer. Yeah, they're in here milking. And rather than having to go all the way through the barn to find all the cows, they bring them in here. Auto takeoff here, and that makes it a lot easier as well. So anybody can put a milker on, but to be able to take it off the cow at the right time is very important because uh, if every milker operates a little bit differently, you'll end up with mastitis issues. And so having auto takeoff, it determines, the machine, the robotics determines, hey, there's uh, only so much milk flow, the cow is done, and it takes the milker off. Uh, and it also means you only have to have labor to put the milker on, not to take it off, meaning you can milk more cows per person. So the milk all goes in here. Oh yeah. And there they have a big milk tank, two milk tanks where they pump all their milk. It gets stored in here until the milk truck comes, picks it all up. And then, uh, then they get more milk. There's the holding pen for the cows. So these cows are waiting here to get milked. We're not gonna spook them, we're just gonna leave them alone. Very important to stay quiet. You don't want the cows, uh, they're not they're used to certain noises. And so what we used to do actually is keep a, a radio playing in the barn just so they would be um, used to voices and noise and not get as spooky and scary when uh, new people come into the barn. It's kind of recommended. And I got metering as well. So that, you can't pick it up, but it's telling you how much milk that cow produced. It all goes through that metering device. The auto takeoff just took that cow off. She's zipping them all right now. And then I presume they're gonna be letting those out very shortly. This is their most modern one <coughs> facility. So they got their pregnant cows in here and also the cows that are about to go pregnant, I guess, they're not, not bred yet, just the, the oldest heifers. Much more modern facility here. And here is what I was talking about with the scraper system. I don't see the scraper, but you can see the chain down the middle of this here path right here. And so it'll move a scraper along and, and clean the manure. I've got my fingers the wrong way, it should be the other way. It's gonna push all the manure that way, I would think. So very modern, high ceilings. Now a lot of people would think, people I guess don't earn in the farming, they think these cows need to be kept warm all the time. You gotta keep it warm, keep it warm. No you don't. Even in Saskatchewan or Manitoba or Alberta where it drops down to minus 40, the cows are fine outside. They are, uh, they're built for the weather. What they need is to be kept out of the wind and the snow and the rain a little bit more. Some shelter is handy. Somebody's cleaning the pen there. What I wanted to see was where the manure goes. They have a scraper system for that. Love the smells here. Always love the smell of dairy. I was gonna show you that scraper system. If I can find it. So here too, this is all uh, locking head gates. When a cow goes in here, it'll move this bar. Yeah, this will come over and you can set it to lock. If you turn this around, there'll be a notch where that red portion will fall into the notch. So the cows can all get locked up for breeding, for, I don't know, if you need to, um, you know, we would used to clip the tails in the one barn I worked at. And uh, the reason for doing that is to keep them short like this. See how this cow's got a short tail, they have a long tail, it gets drooping in the manure and then they get manure all over their backs, it gets kind of gross. And so keeping the tail short, you don't have that problem. Somewhere over here, this manure is gonna drop into a gutter. Maybe, there's the scraper. Okay, this is what I was looking for. So this scraper is held on the cable and our barns, I'm assuming here as well, there's automation on the wall here. These are the control units. 
and you can set it for however many times a day you want it to run. And it would drop all the manure down into the gutter here. And that gutter is going to bring it all outside into a manure, like a big tank, big uh, big pond full of poop, full of manure. What do you think, buddy? Huh? Kind of neat seeing all the cows, eh? Mm -hmm. mm. Hi, the cows, though. So very neat. We need to discuss some ideas yet. Uh, he's got ideas for us to help out with raising of the baby calf on our own facility. That is the proposal. We would be buying the baby calves, raising them, and selling them back to him uh, when they're ready to breed at this size. And, or ready, ready to calve. I guess we need to discuss that yet. If we wouldn't sell them until they're ready to calve, that's two years, uh, two years old. That's when they would calve. So we'd have a lot of time and money invested into the animal by the time they get to the two year point. Uh, also means we'd have no income for the first two years but only investment, a lot of capital investment. After that, it would be uh, regular income as the cows continue to come back to this farm. He has high, high genetics here, uh, AI breeding, and, uh, and a good herd, but he needs somebody to raise the calves, but it sounds good. So we will discuss some of that, and I, am, I imagine I'll tell you about it later. been on my mind sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light hey darling we could get out of town see the beautiful world around wanna see it now pack our bags and get in that car real far Let's get out We can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is so pretty With the wind blowing in your hair We can look back someday 